Hello, my name is Amir. I'm pleased to say that I'm a dental surgeon. I'm actually a little dentist, working on my own, in a little practice in a small town called Havent, in the United Kingdom. And I'm going to talk to you, a budding dentist, a dental therapist, a midwife, a nurse, anyone, but especially you, about liver disease and hepatitis, about liver disease and cirrhosis, about liver disease and patients who are joyless, in particular, so that you would know what to do and hopefully you would know what to say should you ever be confronted or presented in an exam situation with a patient who is joyless. And that is the first question, isn't it? Would you agree with me that this imaginary patient whom we're going to call Mrs. Horn, a 49-year-old patient who is pretty much deeply joined us in that slide, is joined us or not? And if she were very joined us, like Mrs. Horn is, what would you do? What would you say? But well, the first thing is, you tell the examiner, I would like to put my patient, Mrs. Horn, on the good light. The light in June, like this morning, is very good. The light in December is not so good. And you would put Mrs. Horn on the good light, and you would be looking in her eye. And you would be looking at the sclera of the eye. And in order to do that, you depress the lower eyelid and you look at the yellow staining of the sclera. You look at the sclera because the sclera is white in color and shows up very well. You tell the examiner, I think my patient is jaundiced and he will say, make sure by looking at the sclera and you tell him that you have. And she's pretty much deeply jaundiced and evident. The examiner would then say to you, are there any other conditions where you can get a yellow sclera bar being joined us? You tell the examiner, no. I mean, there are other causes of yellow pigmentation of the skin, but they don't usually affect the sclera. They don't usually attack the sclera. The examiner will agree with you. The examiner will then refer you to Mrs. Horn and say to you, what do you think is the likely cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice? Or they say to you, what sort of jaundice are there? You tell the examiner there are three sorts of jaundice. Jaundice that is caused by liver cell disease, which we call hepatocellular. Jaundice that is caused by obstruction to the liver, biliary obstruction. And three, hemolytic jaundice. That is excessive breakdown of red blood cells. Because bilirubin, the name we give to this yellow stuff, comes largely from breakdown of red blood cells and that of hemoglobin. The examiner will accept that and will say to you, in view of Mrs. Horn's jaundice, which is pretty much severe and deep, which one of the three do you think is the likely cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice? You tell the examiner that you're pretty much certain that it is either one hepatocellular, that is jaundice which is caused by liver cell disease, or two biliary obstruction, obstruction to the liver. I suppose that would be a good bet. Because the only thing you are looking at at the moment is the depth of jaundice. Whether it's mild, whether it's moderate, whether it's severe, and Mrs. Horn's jaundice is severe. So it cannot be hemolytic jaundice. Because hemolytic jaundice is always mild. 
patients are not deeply joined us. They have signs and symptoms of anemia because that's what goes in the lesion. And if you were to check their liver function, it would be entirely normal. And even if you were to break down all your red blood cells, break them all down, your bilirubin level will not rise very much. Mrs. Horn's bilirubin level is perhaps 30 times the normal. So it cannot be hemolytic jaundice. So the answer you tell the examiner is either one hepatocellular or two biliary obstruction. Now the examiner may now just try to trip you up a little. That's what his job is. That's what he does. And will say to you, Tell me, what investigations would you now undertake to put the cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice in one category or other? You tell the examiner, without being rude, that you would not undertake any sort of investigations at the moment, but you would merely conduct a pertinent history. In particular, you would like to ask Mrs. Horn six questions. The examiner will be pleased with you and will tell you to proceed with your first question. And you tell the examiner, I would like to know something about the colour of Mrs. Horn's stools. In particular, I would like to know whether they're lighter or whether they're darker. And I'm afraid, in either case, whether the cause is hepatocellular, or biliary obstruction, stools become lighter and there is a tendency for diarrhea. You mustn't lead the patient, very much like the examination in chief in the high court. You mustn't ask leading question. Have the stools become lighter, Mrs. Horn? Or have you noticed the stools become darker, Mrs. Horn? Much, much lighter. And have you noticed anything else, Mrs. Horn, about the motions? Yes. Loose, pale motions. The examiner would then say to you, well, how does that fit with jaundice? You tell the examiner, well, what colours the stools normally? Bile or breakdown product of it. Hence, if there is less bile going to the gut, hence less pigment in the stools. We don't call the pigment in the stools bilirubin. We call it stercobilinogen. But it is dry from bilirubin. That is, bilirubin is conjugated in the gut. And you will perhaps be surprised to learn that bacteria in the gut deconjugated, turning it into stercobilinogen and urobilinogen. And then these can then be absorbed and excreted by the stools and urine, respectively. You tell the examiner that after your first question, you are still unable to put the cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice in one category or other. Because in either case, whether the cause of jaundice is hepatocellular or that ability obstruction, stools become lighter and there is a tendency for diarrhea. And therefore you seek permission to proceed and ask your second question. The examiner will tell you to proceed. You tell the examiner, since the first question was to do with the colour of Mrs. Horn's stools, I would like to know something about the colour of Mrs. Horn's urine because stools and urine go very well together. And I would like to know whether Mrs. Horn's urine is darker or lighter. And so, Mrs. Horn, can you tell us something about the colour of your urine, please? Yes. Much, much darker. The examiner will say to you, well, how does that fit with jaundice? You tell the examiner, well, what colours the urine normally? 
Again, we don't call the pigment in the urine bilirubin, we call it urobilinogen. But as I've just said to you earlier on, it is dry for bilirubin. But the point about obstructive jaundice and that of hepatocellular jaundice, there is actual bile pigment in the urine, so the urine becomes much, much darker. And therefore you tell the examiner that after your second question, you are still unable to put the cause of Mrs. Horn jaundice into one category or other. Because in either case, stools become lighter, urine becomes darker, and there is a tendency for diarrhea, as exhibited by Mrs. Horn's response. And therefore, you seek permission to proceed and ask your third question. The examiner will tell you to proceed. You tell the examiner. I would like to know whether or not Mrs. Horn has developed an itch in any part of her body, and if she has something about this intensity, duration. The examiner will say to you, what is the relevance of that? You told the examiner that itch is just an irritation of the skin due to high bile salt concentration. They deposit them underneath the skin, and patients find itching even more distressing than being yellow. And that usually implies you're dealing with obstruction to the liver, biliary obstruction. And so, Mrs. Horn, can you please tell us whether or not you have developed any itch in any part of your body, and if you have something about its intensity, duration, something about it. Yes. In the past three weeks, I've been itching all over, especially around my shoulders, and I find itching even more distressing than being yellow. Thank you, Mrs. Horn. You told the examiner that after your third question, you are perhaps 25% swayed towards the cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice as being due to obstruction to the liver, biliary obstruction because of the itch, because of these high bile salt concentrations. And therefore, you would seek permission to diversify now and proceed by asking your fourth question. The examiner will tell you to get on with it and proceed and diversify. You tell the examiner, I would like to know how all this started. The onset. The examiner will say to you, why? You tell the examiner, because patients with hepatocellular jaundice, liver cell disease jaundice, where every liver cell is affected more or less at the same time by the same thing, be the virus, be the drug, the jaundice is of sudden onset. Whereas if you were to be operated on this morning and the surgeon were to tie off your bile duct, it would take several days before you became jaundiced and a week or two before you became deeply jaundiced, like Mrs. Hall. So the onset is desperately important. Sudden onset, hepatocellular. Gradual onset, biliary obstruction. Light stools, biliary obstruction, and hepatocellular. Dark urine, biliary obstruction, and hepatocellular. H tends to sway you towards biliary obstruction. And so, Mrs. Horn, can you please tell us how you first discovered that you were jaundiced? Yes. A friend of mine, Nancy, a good friend of mine, pointed it out to me over the garden fence. She said that in the last week I was gradually becoming more yellow and yellow, and today she said I look like a canary. So I went to see my doctor, and he didn't even bother looking in my eye and said to me that I was deeply jaundiced. You tell the examiner that after your fourth question, because of this gradual onset, because of the itch, because of the light stools, because of the dark urine, you are now 70% swayed towards the cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice as being due to 
capillary obstruction. Obstruction to the liver. And therefore, you seek permission to proceed with your fifth question. The examiner will tell you to proceed. You tell the examiner, I would like to know whether or not Mrs. Horn has developed any abdominal pain or discomfort recently. The examiner will say to you, why? He tells the examiner, because I would like to rule out inflammatory things and things like goldstone and things like that. And so, Mrs. Horn, can you please tell us whether you've developed any abdominal pain or discomfort? And if you have, can you please tell us a little bit about it? Yes. The past four weeks, I've been having pain here. My doctor calls it the liver, the right hypochondrium. It's not so much pain, it's discomfort. It's not so much discomfort, I feel bloated. Thank you, Mrs. Horn. You told the examiner that after your fifth question, you're still 70-75% sure that the cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice is due to obstruction to the liver. Biliary obstruction. And therefore, you seek permission to proceed with your final question. The examiner will tell you to proceed. You tell the examiner, I would like to know whether or not Mrs. Horn has had any weight loss. The examiner will say to you, why should patients with jaundice lose weight? You tell the examiner, because they have malabsorption of fat. They have a thing called statyria. That just means a flow of fat. And together, with being off your food, anorexia means patients who are jaundice lose weight. In fact, most patients who are jaundice lose weight. And so, Mrs. Horn, can you please tell us whether or not you've lost any weight recently? And if you have, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. I've gone from 68 kilograms to 61 kilograms. I've nearly lost a whole stone. Thank you, Mrs. Horn. You tell the examiner that after your sixth question, you are pretty much certain, 75% sure, without having done any sort of investigation, that the cause of Mrs. Horn's jaundice is due to obstruction to the liver, biliary obstruction. 